In this screencast, we are going to look at how we name ions. So recall from uh, the atomic structure chapter that an ion is going to be where you have gained or lost electrons. So many main group elements lose or gain electrons to form ions. And if they're, the ions are formed from a single atom, then it's known as a monatomic ion. So mono, remember from your biology class, is the prefix meaning one. So monatomic ions means it's a, an ion that's made up from one atom. So we have, for example, if you have sodium from the periodic table, sodium forms a plus one ion, and that means that its electron in its outer shell went away. So it lost one electron, giving it a plus one charge. As another example, um, nitrogen okay, is going to gain three electrons to form a negative three charge. And so what we see here with the symbol N with the minus three written as a superscript is how we write the symbol for an ion. And you'll recall that atoms do this. They form ions because they want to gain a noble gas electron configuration. They want to have a total of eight electrons in their valence shell that makes them stable like the noble gases. And they do this by gaining or losing electrons. Um, please note that a lot of times you're going to see this term oxidation state. The oxidation state is another way of saying the charge. So these two terms, oxidation state and charge, they're like synonyms. They mean the same thing. So the oxidation state of an ion depends on its number of valence electrons. We can determine the ion charge based on an element's location in the periodic table. So all of the elements in group 1A will have a plus 1 charge. Group 2A will have a plus 2 charge. Group 3A will have a plus 3 charge. And group 4A, it'll actually have either a plus or a minus 4 charge. So in group 4A, either plus or minus 4. In group 5A, negative 3, 6A, negative 2, 7A, negative 1, and 8A is 0. So why does this happen? Well, remember, if we're looking at sodium in group 1A, the um, electron dot diagram for sodium has one dot. And so our goal is to end up with eight electrons in the outer shell. So sodium can either add seven more electrons to fill it up with eight, or it can lose one electron, which will drop it down to a lower energy level and give it a full outer shell with eight electrons. So what do you think is easier, losing one electron or gaining seven? It's easier to lose one electron, so when it does that, it becomes Na plus one. On the other hand, if we take a look at chlorine, which is in group 7A, chlorine has seven valence electrons. So I'm going to draw seven dots here for chlorine. And chlorine has the same option that sodium had. It needs eight total valence electrons, so it can gain one electron to have a full outer shell, or it can lose all seven electrons to have a full outer shell. And we find that it's easier for chlorine to gain one electron, and when it does that, it has a negative one charge. So that's why these charges exist. If you're keeping a periodic table, I recommend that you go ahead and write down the charges. So above group 1A, write plus one. Above 2A, write plus two. Above 3A, write plus three. Remember, above 4A, we want to write plus or minus four, and then we start counting backwards. So above 5a, we write negative 3, 6a, negative 2, 7a, negative 1, and 8a, again, is 0. So we name our ions differently depending on whether they are cations or anions. Recall that cations have a positive charge. So these are the elements that are in groups 1a through 3a. And to name these ions, it's just the element name plus the word ion at the end. So for example, Al plus 3 is going to be aluminum ion. Um, another example would be Ca, which has a plus 2 charge, is going to be called calcium ion. Okay, so we're not changing the name. It's just the name of the element plus the word ion at the end of it. In contrast, anions, which have a negative charge, are found in groups 5A through 7A. And here we change the name. So what we're going to do is take the element name and we're going to change the ending to IDE plus add the word ion. So for example, oxygen with a negative 2 charge is called the oxide ion. N minus 3 is called the nitride ion. 
Okay, so this might be a little difficult for some people to kind of figure out where you change the name ending, um, but just kind of work your way through it. If you have questions, make sure you ask me in class. But you really want to keep in mind, cations have the same name as the element. Anions change the name ending to IDE. In this table, you can see a list of some of the most common monatomic ions. The ones that are bold are the most common, and the other ones are also um, common to encounter, but not quite as common. So we have um, the positively charged ones, the cations over here, and you can see that the names are the same as the element names. And on the right-hand side, we have the anions, or the negatively charged ones. And again, you'll notice that the name endings change to IDE. Note that hydrogen can form a plus one ion or a minus one ion, and that is unique to hydrogen. Now, when we name transition metals, it's a little different. Recall in the periodic table, we have our S section, our D section, and our P section in the main section of the periodic table. The transition metals are the ones here in the D section. These elements can have more than one charge. Okay, so all the transition metals plus tin, um, thallium, lead, and indium, so SN, TL, PB, and IN, they can have more than one type of charge. So for example, copper can have a plus one charge, and it can also have a plus two charge. When I tell the name of copper, I need to make sure I'm letting people know, am I talking about the copper with the plus one charge, or am I talking about the copper with the plus two charge? So we indicate which one we're talking about by listing the element name, followed by the Roman numeral in parentheses and the word ion. So Cu with a plus one charge is known as copper one ion, and Cu with a plus two charge is known as copper two ion. Likewise, um, iron can have two different charges. It can either be Fe plus two or Fe plus three, okay? So Fe plus two is going to be iron two ion, and Fe plus three is iron three ion. Um, most of the time, our Roman numerals only go up to four, so we'd have one, two, three, and four. Those are about the only Roman numerals you need to know um, for this. Sometimes there's five, and that would just be a V, but that doesn't happen very often. In this table, you can see some of the common transition metal ions. We have chromium, cobalt, copper, lead, tin, iron. Um, gold can be either um, plus one or plus three. So we have AU plus one, AU plus three. Uh, let's see, we also have manganese, which can be MN plus two or MN plus three. So these are some of the most common transition metal ions. Okay, polyatomic ions are ions that are made up of more than one atom and they're bonded covalently. Remember from biology, your prefix poly means many. So a polyatomic ion is an ion that's made up of many atoms. Those atoms are all held together by covalent bonds. We see that down here. So the electrons are being shared. But overall, it has a positive or negative charge, which is what makes it an ion. So for example, here we have sulfate, which is SO4 with a minus 2 charge. It has a negative 2 charge for this entire structure. And the reason it has a negative two charge is because there are two more electrons than you would expect. Likewise, we can have positively charged polyatomic ions like ammonium, which is NH4 with a plus one charge. So um, if I'm looking at my graphic here, there's a slight mistake. We should have NH4, so that means there should be four hydrogens here. So NH4, and overall there's a plus one charge. So again, this entire graphic, when we look at it, it has a plus one charge overall because there's one less electron than what you would expect in the diagram. So polyatomic ions are going to be ions that are made up of many atoms that collectively have a positive or negative charge. This table shows you some common polyatomic ions. Um, some of the most common that we use are ammonium, we use um, chlorate, we use acetate, phosphate, uh, chromate and dichromate, sulfite, sulfate, and, and so on. We have carbonate. Um, we, we should have 
phosphate in here that, that we'll be looking at. In class, you will be given a list of polyatomic ions. There are some that you will have to memorize, and I will point them out in class. Um, you can notice that sometimes the names pretty well make sense, like SO3 is sulfite, um, SO4 is sulfate. The difference here in the naming is because sulfate has one more oxygen atom. Sulfite has one less. So just take a few minutes to look over this diagram. Don't bother copying it down in your notes, but just know that you will have to memorize some and start to make some connections between the names and the formulas for polyatomic ions. Please make a complete copy of your notes. Make sure you show your notes either to Mrs. Benke or you can upload them into Schoology.